All right. So let's close our eyes. So last week when I was covering the metaphysical correspondences of all of these holidays that have been happening, right? Purim, Passion, Passover, and of course, as I jokingly say, tongue and cheek, because I like the alliteration, Pasqua, right? Easter. But what I was referring to all last week was the idea of ascension and how for us as beings in bodies that there are times when we are befallen with difficulty or the world itself is very troublesome as it, as it is right now. And it's difficult to ascend, to rise above. The metaphor of Jesus is that he did not fix the world, he transcended it. And he took this human form, he was the divine who took human form, right? I like to call it divine made flesh in order to show us that although it is difficult, it is possible. It is possible to rise, it is possible to ascend, it is possible to realize our purpose and our potential. But of course, the, the path can be fraught with distraction and disturbance, and it can also be peppered with situations and our own thoughts that might not be of highest service or in an ascending vibration. One of the things I talk about so often is that raising our own consciousness is one of the most powerful things we can do because if everyone did it, the collective consciousness would be completely different. And if we begin with ourselves, if we begin by going inward, if we begin by ascertaining the places in, within ourself, in, in mind and in spirit, where we might be descending, then we can try to turn it around and lift it in, and create it instead into a paradigm that is ascending. I was talking how I, I saw a TED talk by a neurophysicist um, named uh, Mariano Sigmon, and he was talking about how the words that we use can actually predetermine whether or not we have psychological illness. Very interesting. And I was thinking, I t I, words are very important to me. Words are my craft, right? I consider myself to be a wordsmith in my writing, in my dharma, et cetera, et cetera, in my teaching. And one of the things I do realize is that in this age of the rapid fire response, in this age of the automatic press, the automatic send, if you would, that a lot of times we aren't responding, we are reacting. And because energy has a boomerang like quality, one of the challenges for us is instead of reacting, taking a breath and then trying to respond. And the words we use and we choose have a lot to do with what resonance our actions and response have, not only in our own life, but in the world around us. The reality is that every word has a vibration. So I've spoken of this before, when in the calibrational scale, for example, the energy of love calibrates at a 700. The energy of anger calibrates at about 140 or 200, jealousy even lower, and hatred, of course, is like a 60. So when we think about the, the frequency of our words, the frequency of our thoughts, the frequency of our feelings, much like light, vibrates so much more quickly than sound. That's why you see the lightning first and the thunder follows. For us, our words are our wand. And the words we use in the world not only affect ourselves, but everyone around us. And so therefore, if our speech is elevated, and if our energy is rising, and if our consciousness is ever evolving, we actually can be a very powerful instrument of change for the better in our immediate sphere. 
we don't have to be famous to be great and do well. I talked about this a little because I'm doing a workshop on the 7th of May on finding your purpose and discovering your dharma. Your dharma is not your day job. It could be, but it's usually not. And more important, celebrity does not dictate importance. It's quality, it's veracity, it's integrity. These are the things that really resonate, that really last, as David Brooks calls them, the, quali- the, the epitaph, the, the obituary resume, is so much more important. It's who you were and how people remember you. And so we begin with the words that we use. We begin by thinking before speaking. We also begin by not engaging in conversation that is a lower level of vibration or a basement level rhetoric because that will not change anything. Mother Teresa used to say, don't tell me what you're against, tell me what you're for. And these are the agents of change. This is when words can be the precipitation of actions that are powerful and positive and light and healing and whole. So come onto your back, please. Let your blankets or blanket, one blanket if you want, be a